Okay, I'm going to show you the answers to Sec 5, Mid-Year Exam, Paper 1, Questions. Okay, question 1. They ask you for the source document and the journal. Source documents for the first one will be invoice. If you buy inventory or you buy any other asset or you sell inventory or you sell other assets on credit, the document is invoice. So in this case, we are buying other assets. So the journal should not be sales, should not be purchased journal. It should be general journal. Okay, when you return goods to your supplier or customer returns goods to us, the source document is credit note. So in this case, uh, goods is returned to the supplier. So purchases has been returned, so it will be under purchases, return journal. Number three, part three, pay wages to part-time employees by cash. Now in this case, when you pay your employee, you will not expect your employee to give a document. So we have to give a document for the employee to sign. And that will be payment voucher. This voucher is issued by us for the employee to sign. Right. So for any payment by cash or by check, all cash transactions should be recorded in the cash book. Okay, now part B. Name and explain the accounting theory that requires the use of source documents. So uh, the Accounting theory is objectivity concept. And this objectivity concept states that transactions Recorded based on on information that is verifiable, that is reliable and verifiable. So there is the objectivity concept. Part C. Part C, we are given a purchaser journal. And what does a purchaser journal record? Record all purchases of goods or purchases of inventory on credit. And these are our suppliers. Okay. So on this day, we buy from Charlie Putti. On credit, on March 23rd, we buy from Adam Living. From March 31st, we, we, there is a total purchases for the month. Okay, so in which ledger can the individual accounts of Charlie Putti and Adam Living be found? All these are trade payables. So all trade payables are found in only one ledger, and that is the trade payable or purchases ledger or trade payable ledger. which is one of the three ledgers in the business. 
Okay, part two of C, which two ledger account were used to post the amount of 3,790 on March? In other words, you, uh, which two account do we record this amount? You'll be recorded, okay, in uh, inventory account as well as trade paper account. So we will debit. It did not ask us whether to debit or credit, so you can just say uh, inventory and trade payable control account. Okay. So this is answer to question one. Okay, now we go to question two. We are going to be asked on capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. Uh, Wellman Electronics incurred the following expenditure during the month of January 2018. State whether they are capital or revenue expenditure and you must state also the reason for your answer. Right? So installation of installation cost of new machinery. Alright. Is capital expenditure. And the reason is this expenditure is to bring the non-current asset to the ready to use condition to the ready to use condition Okay, next one, 2A part 2, lubricants for machinery used in the factory. Lubricants is used to maintain or to operate the machine, so it will be considered as revenue expenditure. Okay, so the answer will be cost to maintain non-current asset. Okay, part 3 of 2A, explain with an accounting theory why government would treat the purchase of an electronic tablet costing 120 which can be used for three years as a revenue expenditure although this uh, asset can be used for more than three years but maybe because of this concept maturity concept Because of this material concept, it will be treated as a revenue expenditure. Okay, materiality concept states that if the amount paid for capital expenditure. is considered immaterial which means it does not 
affect decision making it can be recorded as revenue expenditure So anything that will not affect the any expenditure which considered as capital expenditure which does not affect decision making can be recorded as revenue expenditure. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay. Uh, Wellman bought two machines for fifty thousand each on first of May. On first of January, one of the machine was sold for twenty two thousand. A new machine costing 60000 was purchased on the same date from Job Heavy Industry Limited on credit. So when you buy two machines for 50000 each, in other words, when you record in your machine account, it will be 100000 because 50 times 2. Okay, here, it was the company's policy to provide full year depreciation 20% using a reducing balance in the year of purchase. So it does not matter when you purchase the machinery. Right? Okay, so the first year we will have full year depreciation and not charge any depreciation in your year of sales. So the year when you sell uh, the non current set, there will not be any depreciation charge. The financial year of Wellman Electronics ends on 31st of March. Explain why it is suitable to use the reducing balance method to depreciate machines. Right? Then you can answer Wellman uses the reducing balance method the machines are assumed to provide more benefits in the earlier years of his useful life. Okay, now I'm going to show you the question two. B part two. You are asked to prepare the accumulated depreciation of machinery account. So I'll show you the answer here. Right? Depreciation is recorded at the end of the year and the counting year is ends on the thirty first of March each year. So the first year will be 2016. So when you calculate the depreci depreciation for, for the first year, you will be you are using a reducing balance method, but we do not minus any accumulated depreciation because there isn't any accumulated depreciation in the first year. So we will just multiply 20%, which is the rate of depreciation, times the cost of the two machines. So that will give us the depreciation and when you enter the accumulated depreciation because it's credit in nature, you enter the credit column and you have a credit balance. And then you bring down this balance to next year which is 
Next accounting year it begins on 1st of April 2016. All right. Then you bring down the balance. And then somewhere in the second year, January the 1st, we sold the asset. And when you sell the asset, you have to take out the accumulated depreciation of the machinery that you sold. All right. This 20,000, the balance, is actually the balance for two, accumulated depreciation for two machines. So when, it, when one of them is sold, we have to take out half of it, which is 20,000 divided by two. So we take out 10,000. And we transfer this 10,000 to the sales of non-current asset account. All right? So leaving us 10,000 for the remaining machine. Then we bought a new machine at the same time. So what happened here is the for the old machine is 50,000 minus 10,000. For the new machine, there is no accumulated depreciation. So the depreciation at the end of the counting year will be 20% times the net book value of the old machine and the cost price of the new machine, which is 20,000. All right. And this 20,000 will add to the 10,000, which will give us the new balance of 30,000 for your accumulated depreciation. We should have to bring it down to the next accounting year, 1st of April 2017, bring it down to 30,000. So that is accumulated depreciation. The third part of B, we are supposed to show the sale of non-current asset account. All right, we're supposed to prepare a sales of non-current asset account. There are four items in the sale of non-current asset. The cost price of the, the asset that you sold, which is here, machinery, all right, which is debit here, which is the cost price of the machine that we sold. Then the accumulated depreciation of the machinery that we sold, which is here, which is credit. So the two will give us the net book value of 40,000 before we sold the machine. So this is the net book value on machine before we sold. And how much did we sell it? We sold it for 22,000. And uh, we received this amount. So the net book value is higher than the selling price of the machine resulting in a debit balance here which is actually a loss so when we go to the end of the year which is that march 31st we have to show the loss of 18,000 that means we transfer this 80,000 as an expense in the profit and loss account Next question, three. This is a question on uh, allowance or impairment of trade receivable. So the question tell us that uh, Oli Supply started buying, started a business buying and selling plants. Eh? So plant uh, inventories on 1st of January 2016. Then the following to relates to the trade receivable at the end of each financial year 2016 and 17. So these are the trade receivable, trade receivable at the end of each accounting year, which will be shown in your balance sheet, not anywhere in your accounts. Huh? Then um, here is the amount estimated to be uncollectible at 31st December in 2016. We have two person who may not be able to uh, pay us. Esther and Wayne. So the total amount is 4,006. This is the amount we will consider as an allowance for the end of 31st December 2016. And then in 2017, only one person may not pay us. Okay? Or uh, estimated to be an uncollectible deal, 1002. So this will be, these two add up the balance. 4,006 will be the balance for the first year for allowance. 
This 1,002 will be the allowance for the second year, at the end of the second year. Okay, then we go to the additional information. On 31st of May, Esther was declared bankrupt and she issued a cheque 900 to settle partially the amount she owed only. When a person is declared bankrupt, does not mean that she cannot pay us anything. If you look at Esther, Esther owes 2005 here. She can pay us 900, which means to say that the remaining amount, 1006, is the amount that she cannot pay. Alright? So the remaining balance in the account was written off. So that is the amount that cannot be paid. That she cannot pay and that will be written off. Okay? So let's see how we prepare the allowance eh, for the impairment of trade receivable account. So we, when we started the first year, since we don't have a balance in our allowance, this figure will be also the impairment loss for the end of the first year. So if we start the allowance without balance, the balance at the end of the year will be the impairment loss. So this is the end of the first year. It's the impairment loss of trade receivable, 4006. Why credit? Because the allowance is a contra asset account, so we have to credit the account. And the balance is 4006 credit. And then we bring down the balance to next year, which is January the 1st. And uh, before the end of the year, Esther could not pay the whole amount. She could only pay us 900. So the remaining amount, which is 1006, is written off here. So this 4006 uh, uh, are deemed to be uncollectible. All right? Likely to be uncollectible. This one is now definitely uncollectible. So we have to remove from this balance. So we minus this, we put in the debit columns to minus it, and we are left with the remaining balance, 300,000, likely to be uncollectible from last year. Then as you see from the question, at the end of the first year, second year, sorry, there's amount of 1,002 which may be uh, estimated to be uncollectible. So this is, will be the balance. So this 3,000 is a balance after we minus the written off from last year. As compared to the amount that may not be collectible at the end of last uh, of this year, the difference is 1,000 and it's a decrease. So we have to reduce it. 3,000 minus 1,008 is 1,002. So in other words, uh, we have less trade receivable that may not be collectible. So it become a reversal. So this is a reversal. All right? It's not shown as a reversal yet because there's no reversal of impairment loss on trade receivable. But this figure will be shown as a negative figure under expenses in your income statement. Okay, so we bring down the balance of 1002 to 2018. Okay, this is how we show the income statement for the year 31st December. And because the 1008 above here is deemed to be a reversal, so we put down as under less expenses and put it down as reversal of impairment loss and trade receivable. And we put a bracket there to show that this is a negative expense. And this figure, this figure 1008 will be deducted from the rest of the expenses. In your balance sheet, you show under current asset, the trade receivable, the amount of 39,000 come from here, from here, from the question here, trade receivable, 39,000. And the 1002 and the 1002 come from here. The balance in your allowance for the balance. This is a balance in your allowance 
for the end of 2017. So we minus the trade receivable 1002 and we get a net trade receivable 37,800. Alright, let's see what is the last question. Part C, part D. Explain with accounting theory why a business should make an allowance for impairment of trade receivable. Okay, so the answer is allowance for impairment of trade receivable represents the amount of trade receivable that is unlikely to be collectible. Unlikely, like most likely, we cannot collect. This is in accordance with the prudence concept. And what does the prudence concept state? It states that the business must adjust the book value of any asset if its value is likely to be reduced. So in this case, uh, there is a high chances that the asset will be reduced. All right? Okay, let's go to question four. Okay, question four, we are given uh, a trial balance of Dion, who is a trader. He buy and sell tropical plants and uh, he maintains a full set of accounting records. Okay, so these are the list of balances that he has. Okay, after the above balances were extracted, the following transaction occurred on 31st March. Okay, whenever we have a new transaction that come along, we have to adjust some of the figure here. If the account is not in this list, we have to introduce a new account here. Okay, the first one. Debit note is normally given when we undercharge a customer. So it's actually sales revenue that is undercharged. Okay, and a trade receivable also undercharged. So in this case, we have to adjust the sales revenue and the trade receivable. Because we undercharge them, now we want to uh, charge them, so we have to add to the sales revenue 250. And the trade receivable will owe us more by 250, so we have to add 250 here. So there's a change in these two accounts. Dion took goods. For personal use. Of course, when it's personal use, it involves drawings, so your drawing will increase. Your drawing will increase by 500. And when you take goods, your inventory will be reduced. So look at your inventory. Your inventory is minus 500. Okay, so there are two counts. All transactions, as you know, at least affect two accounts. So in these first two uh, adjustments, there are two accounts for each one. The third one also will affect maybe two accounts or three accounts. A check payment to a supplier of goods, 1,015 full settlement or 2,000 owing to him. Trade suppliers are trade payable. So when when we owe trade payable 2000 and we settle full settlement means we are going to settle this 2000 so we're not going to owe him uh, when we pay him we're not going to owe him this 2000 anymore which means that your trade payable here will be minus 2000 and when you pay a check your cash at bank will be reduced by this amount so let's go to your cash at bank and minus 1750 of course, you cannot balance because there is a difference of 250. And this 250 by default is the discount received. Alright? So, we, we have to add to the discount received. So, it's a discount received here. We add 250 to discount received. Alright? So, there is adjustment. Eh? Okay. Okay, let's answer part A first. State one purpose of trial balance. Okay, there are two purposes. Uh, I can give you the answer right now. 
One is trial balance have to check the arithmetical errors that may have uh, happened in your accounts. Or the trial balance helps in the preparation of the financial statement. That means it helps us to prepare the income statement and balance sheet. Right? Okay. After you have adjusted all these, uh, uh, drawings will have a new figure, sales revenue will have a new figure, Discount receive also, cash and bank, we have a new figure, inventory, three receivable and three payable, all we have new figures. So all these new figures, you have to go and enter into your trial balance. So your question say show all workings, that means beside your accounts, you must show all the workings that you, you, you see here, all the workings that you see here, alright? Okay, so this is the answer. Okay, so all the workings here, there, all the workings here. So these are the accounts that are affected. So all together, seven accounts affected. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you prepare your trial balance. Okay, what to enter under trial balance? In the debit column, you put in all your assets, expenses, and in your credit column, you put your liabilities, income, and your capital. All right. So if you have any contra, then you have to put accordingly, lah. Okay. Okay. Capital, there's no change, so we put capital is here, C, yeah. So credit, drawings after the adjustment is five thousand nine. Drawing is contra capital. So if capital is credit, drawing will be debit. So it's here. Cost of sale is an expense. So expense is here. Sales revenue is an income. Income will be here with a new figure. Commission income is an income. So it's also here. Discount received is also income. It's also here. Utilities, expense in the debit column. Cash and bank. It's an asset, so it's in the debit column. Inventory asset is debit column. Sales return is contra sales revenue. So if sales revenue is credit, sales return should be debit. Trade receivable is an asset, so it's debit. And trade payable is a liability, it's credit. And you add up the two columns, it should balance. So that is the answer for paper one, media exam for 5N, 2008, 2018.